一个永远不应该被创造的记录。Crossing of hundred million mark is a very sad story, but somehow it provides us also with more visibility, more people understand that we need the solidarity of all countries. Solidarity, yes. Collaboration. 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 全球难民治理。We very much appreciate the Chinese government call not to politicize humanitarian assistance. Unfortunately, the issues of refugees is very often politicized. 风云对话专访联合国难民署驻华代表卢佩赫。二零二二年，因战争、迫害、暴力冲突和自然灾害被迫流离失所者超一亿人，相当于世界总人口的百分之一以上。持续半年的俄乌战争已引发欧洲最大规模的难民潮，给全球难民安置带来巨大挑战。联合国难民署成立之初，旨在帮助二战后被迫流离失所的一百万欧洲平民。一个预期运作三年就解决难民问题的组织。已成立逾七十年，迄今为止，人道需求有加无已。从车臣到卢旺达，从阿富汗到缅甸，卢佩赫均身处一线，参与人道主义救援行动，并在联合国难民署总部担任多个高级管理职位。现任联合国难民署驻华代表的卢佩赫，近日来到北京凤凰中心，接受了风云对话专访。应对难民危机，难民署将提出何种长期解决方案？难民又将何处安身立命 ？Mr. Nupek, it's great to have you on our show. Let's begin by talking about the UNHCR. So, could you tell us about some of the major contributions the UNHCR has done to assist refugees worldwide? How have you helped the refugees to build their lives back? We can talk about a multi-pronged approach. First, we ensure physical safety, security. So it's a lot of work with um, uh, government, host government, host community, and sometimes the authorities in power. Mm. And then we have a second phase is to ensure that we deliver on time the right um, core relief items, make sure that our person of concern have access to uh, the basic, to cover their basic needs. So it is, uh, again, core relief items, shelter materials, but it's also access to services. So we try to think about education, even from the early stage of an emergency, because emergency and crisis always last longer than one thing. But then, most importantly, you also need to be able to find a durable solution. So this is probably one of the most important and also uh, difficult parts. So we have uh, three durable solutions, usually. The most uh, de desirable one is uh, voluntary return. And sometimes we also have to deal with what we call um, uh, good emergency, positive emergency. I've been myself deployed to Burundi. When What's we... a positive emergency? So when we have to deploy staff to assist in the mass return, uh, so it is difficult because there's a problem of absorption when we want to be uh, sustainable, but it is better than uh, dealing with the outflow of refugees. So we have done that in uh, many occasions. Uh, uh, I think I, I, I was personally involved when we uh, assist uh, refugees returning from, Buru uh, from Tanzania to Burundi. And at some stage in Afghanistan itself, and uh, I think it was in the uh, early 2000s, Five. There was also some uh, movement return from Pakistan and from Iran. It was not a massive return movement, but there was still some uh, return. So that uh, is one of the durable solution, is voluntary return. And then we also have uh, what we call local integration. Mm -hmm. This is, even if it's temporary, 
but local integration is also important. We don't want our person of concern to develop a syndrome of um, dependency. So we try to reduce whenever possible, as soon as possible, so that our refugees, our person of concern, do not rely entirely of, on humanitarian assistance. We make sure that they can fend for themselves, assist it, of course, but they can fend for themselves. We try to assist the host community as well. So that is, local integration is also extremely important. And we also have um, uh, what we call re um, resettlement. So this is for extremely vulnerable groups that cannot stay for in one place. We have to relocate them to a third country. Resettlement. Resettlement, yes. Lu Peihe in his young age experienced a big fall. He was born in a foreign family. In the 70s, the Middle East was burning up. Lu Peihe and his family were killed. He was born in the Middle East, the child of a Thai refugee. 带着那份深刻的无助和记忆，先后在俄罗斯和意大利完成学业后的卢佩赫来到联合国难民署，任职近三十年的时间里，他走过非洲、亚洲和欧洲超过三十个国家，拥有着丰富的应急准备、响应、协调及一线驻地行动经验。You've obviously got plenty of experience.、Uh, in fact, thirty years with the UNHCR. And you've had a rather extraordinary experience as a child growing up, being born in Cambodia to a diplomat family, but also displaced as a teenager. Would you share with us that experience? How do you think that's shaped your character as a young man? Uh, well, although it happened quite a long time ago, I think it's still very fresh in my memories. I can say that I had quite a relatively comfortable childhood. My uh, father was in a diplomat for the late Prince Sihanouk in the early 70s. So uh, we follow him in his different posting in uh, Egypt, Cairo, in uh, uh, Santiago, Chile, and uh, his last post was in Moscow, in at that time uh, the former Soviet Union. But um, in the mid 70s, we returned back to Cambodia. It was absolutely uh, the worst timing. So the turmoil, the armed conflict affect me personally. All of a sudden, all my life was uh, up and down. I lost uh, almost everything, including my parents, my family. I found myself in a, in a flow of, uh, of uh, people fleeing armed conflicts inside Cambodia. And I end up also for uh, some time in a refugee camp in Thailand. Uh, I remember the as a, an accompanied minor, I remember the, these three letter UAM, uh, which means unaccompanied minor, uh, in a, a card, probably a Russian card at that time. Uh, I, I saw at that time that UAM has been some funny nickname was given to me by some aid worker, but I realized later what the meaning of unaccompanied minor. How old were you then? 14 years old. So, so it was quite a difficult time. But then, uh, yes, it, I think it has uh, shaped my, my life. Um, I, I uh, managed to complete my secondary education. I received a scholarship uh, to, um, uh, in the former Soviet Union to uh, study engineering. Um, and then something that I, I would like to recall, my first work with the UNHCR was in Azerbaijan. Uh, I started in 1994. It was exactly 10 years um, after I spent one year in Azerbaijan in the preparatory year. So I also managed to trace some of my former uh, teachers and even some of fellow students. So the surprise of, to see me after 10 years coming as a UN official. So I think that uh, it was my first assignment with uh, UNHCR and I also make this decision to stay with you next year. In 2022, 
俄乌双方军队的战线绵延几千公里，几乎绝大多数的乌克兰东中部地区都处在战火之中，而乌克兰大部分人都生活在经济相对发达的东部和中部地区。交火区的乌克兰居民人数至少有两千万人。俄乌战争已引发二战以来难民人数增长最快的难民危机。造成一千多万乌克兰人流离失所，沦为难民，其中有六百六十万乌克兰人在本国无家可归，超过六百万乌克兰难民逃往邻国。截止至七月底，俄罗斯已接收超一百八十五万人，波兰接收约一百二十五万人，德国逾九十一万人，捷克逾四十万人，其余的难民分布全欧三十多个国家。I think the UNHCR also warned that in Ukraine alone, there has been six million plus refugees that were forced to flee their homes, and internally there are about six to eight million. The figures vary according to different reports. Internally displaced Ukrainians. In this regard, what has the UNHCR done, and what do you advocate?、Um, Ukraine was one of my longest duty station. I was there. Uh, as a UNHCR deputy representative from 2011 until 2017, so I was there when the, at the initial stage of the crisis in 2014. So I know the situation pretty well. At that time, we have almost very few refugees fleeing across international border, but we had about almost one million internally displaced. And for for me, particularly, I say, wow, what a number, one million. So now six million and internally displaced is extremely challenging because、uh, many have been affected by also secondary movement. We have been calling from the very beginning of the crisis that all military activity should cease. We call for unimpeded. Access to our person of concern. Why? Because it's extremely difficult to plan a response in that circumstances. The armed conflicts、uh, just occur almost everywhere, so it's not easy for us to plan the logistic. It's not easy for us to plan safe shelter because it can be impacted. People are on the move very often with secondary, or sometimes they move、uh, several times from one place to another. So now, despite the fact that、uh, there's ongoing、uh, military activities, we must already start planning for longer term. So we are looking already into the fast approaching winter. What I want to say is that inside Ukraine, of course, we do provide、uh, core relief items, shelter, but what is also important is access to information.、Uh, Person of concern sometimes or most of the time have to make very difficult decision. They don't always have the best information to make、uh, the decision. It's not that we know everything, but we try to tell them where assistance is available, what place is safer than another, what kind of condition they will find in certain areas, so they can make、uh, a timely decision where to where to go and what to do. So this is also important.、Uh, with all this fighting, all the hardship that they have faced, and、uh, almost the large majority of our person of concern are women and children. Now, with the refugee outside of the Ukraine, the large majority of them are in Poland or in Moldova, for one reason: because they all hope to go back home as soon as possible.、Mm. So it, it is. The situation changed very fast. We have return or we have、uh, movement going across、uh, back and forth from the borders, which is not easy to manage. It's also not that bad because people must have the information to make the decision. They go back, they see the situation, they return to Poland or they, they move further if、uh, if they if they see that the house are completely destroyed. So this kind of movement is also quite important for us.、Uh, for Uh, the refugees outside of Ukraine, we do work a lot with the host government to make sure we advise on their policy. We advise the host community. We have been extremely uh, 
uh, grateful for the solidarity, the support, but the longer the situation lasts, the, the, the risk of a, a fatigue is, is there. 早在俄乌冲突前，全球难民形势就已极其严峻。联合国难民署2022年全球重新安置需求报告显示，全球近百分之九十的难民收容在发展中国家。九幺幺发生后，美国发动或参与的战争导致至少四千九百万人流离失所，其中大部分为中东及其周边地区的平民。截止至二零二零年底。每九位难民中就有一位来自叙利亚或阿富汗。仅在叙利亚，过去十一年就有一千三百多万人被迫离开家园，造成了当今时代最严重的人道主义和难民危机。而在美国军事干涉长达二十年的阿富汗，亦有一千多万阿富汗人沦为难民。二零二一年八月，美国撤出阿富汗后，拜登下令冻结阿银行近百亿美元海外资产。对阿富汗实施严苛的金融管制与封锁，种种做法令阿富汗经济民生困境雪上加霜，制造了新的人道主义危机。What obstacles has the UNHCR encountered in Afghanistan and Syria, and what's the situation there now? I first start with Afghanistan.、Um, I've been deployed to Afghanistan also in the early 2000s to. Uh, to deal with the displacement, one of the major obstacles we, we, we face now in Afghanistan is,、uh, you know, that there is、um, a new government in place.、Uh, the capacity is、uh, quite limited,、uh, not only financial but、uh, in all fields.、Mm -hmm. um, there are major、uh, security and safety challenges、mm -hmm. uh, with regard to rule of law. So it's a very, very、um, challenging operational environment. So、uh, UNHCR,、um, of course, we have to readjust our intervention. We have now、uh, presence in almost all the provinces in Afghanistan, and somehow in certain provinces,、uh, the situation, security situation, has improved compared to the past. And there are also some internal return you know, from one province to another. But all in all, it's extremely difficult. You heard about、uh, the earthquake quite recent. There's、um, a huge、um, issue with food security that we have to deal with. So in Afghanistan, we are practically involved in almost all aspects of life,、uh, providing not only core relief item, food, cash assistance, but we work a lot with the. Authority in power to build the capacity to make sure that they can also absorb、um, bilateral assistance, and a lot of which, by the way, come from China.、Uh, we have been also receiving、um, assistance from China in delivering uh, very uh, needed core relief items and also in assisting、uh, children to return to to school. So that is um, is um, is something that we value a lot, but.、Um, I think there's there's still a lot of work to do in Afghanistan. Syria, Syria, as I said, is、uh, the largest uh, 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 displacement crisis for UNHCR. The large majority of refugees are in Turkey, Jordan, Lebanon, and we have also a large number of internally displaced. So it's a daily struggle for POC.、Uh, the life has not improved. The opposite with the COVID-19、uh, epidemic,、uh, there's more pressure on the host community. There's again more pressure.、Uh, there's a fatigue、uh, by the host government and the donors. So we have to deal with these issues. We have been calling also the international community not to forget about this protracted、uh, crisis and situation. If I have to think about one, let's say,、um, relatively positive fact. Is that one in twenty refugees outside Syrian refugees、um, outside、uh, Syria live in camp? I say this is a positive thing because、uh, camp situation is our last resort.、Uh, it's not sustainable. It's extremely difficult to、um, maintain uh, um, acceptable living condition in a camp. So the fact that.、Uh, The majority of our refugees are in urban setting, 
uh, mix with local population uh, somehow uh, mitigate the impact is still extremely difficult, but it would have been untenable and sustainable to have a large um, a, a refugee number in camps.中国一直帮助联合国难民署援助和保护被迫逃离家园的人为非洲和亚洲国家提供了关键的个人防护用品和其他救援物资。中国企业也为联合国难民署在非洲的疫情应对和教育项目慷慨捐赠。uh, what we call a task office. Our main uh, job was to assist the Chinese government in receiving uh, the Indo-Chinese case rules. I think at that time there were about uh, 300,000 right. Indo-Chinese uh, refugees. Uh, the large majority of them have uh, some uh, Chinese uh, origin. Chinese origin. So this was uh, the start of our collaboration and it has, uh, uh, so a lot have changed since uh, that time. And I can say that our collaboration has grown in, in range and depth. Now we, our focus is no longer on domestic issues, but on how to increase our partnership in solving global issues for displacement and refugees. We have seen uh, a lot of um, progress. Um, not only China is uh, constant, regular contributor to our, with the core contribution, financial contribution to UNHCR. But on top of that, we have been uh, working very closely with uh, uh, Chinese agency, SITGA, uh, in uh, developing South-South Cooperation Fund project. Now it's a global uh, development uh, yes. uh, project. So we have uh, many successful projects and we very much appreciate the, the Chinese government call not to politicize humanitarian assistance. Right. Unfortunately, the issues of refugees is very often politicized. So it's not a, an easy topic. Uh, we are, and there's still a lot of misunderstanding globally about who the refugees are, why they became refugees and how to deal with the issues. In China, we have seen a lot of progress in the understanding of these issues. And looking at the social media response, we can see a lot of evolution, understanding. It's not only about compassion, it's also about um, an issue that is of common interest to uh, the whole world, including China. I can tell you that when I joined UNHCR a uh, long time ago, I was first de deployed to Africa. Uh, there was not so many uh, representatives of Asia or, or, or China, but uh, I was always mistaken from, uh, uh, for a Chinese national. But later on, when I, I was deployed in, in, in Uganda, in the Congo, I was greeted by uh, colleagues about children in the city with uh, Ni Hao. I say, wow. So it has changed uh, a lot. I think the, the presence of, uh, of China, the statute of China abroad uh, has changed. Um, so with that, uh, there's also more visibility and also um, certain expectation and also more understanding of, uh, uh, of private company that forced displacement is something that we all have to care about and deal with. 
um, this with forced displacement. If we don't address the root cause, if we don't have peace, there will be no stability. If there's no stability, there's no development. So somehow, I think uh, this um, crossing of 100 million mark is a very sad story, uh, but somehow it provides us also with more visibility, more people understand that it's a global issues and we need the solidarity of solidarity all to address. Yes. And collaboration. And collaboration. Too. Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Nupek. A very uh, meaningful work you and the UNHCR has done. Yeah. Thank you for having me here. Thank you pleasure. very much to be on our show. Thank you.